bottom. Sorry. Start again. Um, so, long story short, David is now in a mess with Bathsheba. He's trying to cover it up. He's trying to get Uriah, her husband, to go home. He won't do that. And again, rather than just coming out with it all, he still tries to cover it up. And David gets, as Uriah, that's Jesus' husband, to go out on the front line of the battle and be kind of left there so that you can almost guarantee he's going to get killed. Just to have David's sin cover up. Once Bathsheba is no longer um, no longer having a husband, David summons her to become Mrs. King. Mm-hmm. But now let's see David. You remember the story? Little shepherd boy, anointed to be king, a prayer warrior. Fearless leader, fought Goliath, amazing king, one sin, one broken relationship covered up, kept quiet, and David, the undefeated king, is now defeated. His moral courage, able leadership, Godly principles were just squashed. He paid dearly for failing to uphold the truth, the justice, and mercy. And yes, God forgives sin. And for us, through Jesus Christ, we know that God forgives sin. And we will come around the communion table in a short while. But God still wants us to deal with our sin. For sin has consequences, as David found out, and we often find out ourselves. Of course, some knew the truth. With what was going on, David summoned her and so on, but you know, some knew what was going on. And, and for many months, no one had dared to confront the king about it. No one had dared to pull him aside and question him about his defiance of God's commandments, his decision to execute Uriah, or his determination to marry Bathsheba, until Nathan, good old Nathan, the prophet, shows up one day. And we just read the story in 2 Samuel 12 about this rich man taking someone's precious lamb that you get in heaven. And Nathan tells David this rich man is taking this precious lamb and in verse 5 David burned with anger against this man in the story. As surely as the Lord lives, says David, the man who did this deserves to die. He must pay for the land four times over because he did such a thing and had no pity. You know, David does his own bread there. When he took the word right out of Nathan's mouth and said, the man who did this deserves to die. He must pay for that land four times over did such a thing and had no pity. And Nathan had indirectly at that point accused David of having no sympathy, no sorrow, no shame in his heart. It was true. David felt nothing. At that point, his heart had been hard to what had gone on. Try to protect himself. 
And David thought only of himself. Not of those he had harmed. And then in verse 7, we read, Nathan said to David, You are that man. This is what the Lord, the God of Israel says. I anointed you as king over Israel and delivered you from the hands of Saul. I gave your, gave your master's house to you and your master's wives into your arms. I gave you a house of Israel and Judah. And if all this had not uh, been too little, I would have given you even more. Why did you despise the word of the Lord by doing this evil in his eyes? Verse 12 is saying, you, you did it in secret. But the Lord says, I was there. I saw it. And people may be treating David with kid gloves and regard his behaviour as perhaps even kingly perks. But not God. God spat David with the worst possible charge. A seldom used but carefully worded charge. Did you get it? To despise the word of the Lord. To despise the word of the Lord. See, God, I think, wasn't charging David with despising the little man who was acting, and, and acting like a tyrant over him or betraying his soldier's trust and losing his men's confidence. No, no, no. God was charging David with despising David's sin was against Uriah and Bathsheba, but ultimately, ultimately, his actions and attitudes were nothing short of despising the word of the Lord. As I was reading that passage last week, my mind went to um, Ananias and Sapphira. Mm. You remember them in Act? Not the same situation, but in some way similar. Let me remind you of, of the story now. Uh, you remember the early church were very much selling their possessions and giving it into the church so they could be shared out to the poor and so on. And um, Ananias and Sapphira had a plot of land and they sold it and they, they brought the money to the church. Mm. Sounds good. They didn't bring all the money to the church, they kept some money back for themselves. And again, nothing wrong with that. They were entitled to keep some money from the sale of their property. Mm. But, they lied about it. Yeah. They said they'd given it all to the church. And they covered it up. And so they too were despising the Lord's word. And for that, you know the story, they fell down dead. And great fear went through the church that day. It said that I bet it did. God will not be mocked. And David, we're told, deserved death. Even David said so. But still the Lord had mercy on him. God was still more interested in making David a better person. And you know the Lord in our lives, in everyone's life, observes, searches, Judges the heart. Remember, God looks at the heart. God disciplines, not demands. He looks for the truth, because the truth sets us free. He looks for humility and compassion in our lives. He searches us for repentance and reconciliation, because that's what God's like. And a few minutes we're going to come around the table. And Paul wrote instructions, certainly the church at Corinth, 
about the communion table. Let me read those words uh, from 1 Corinthians chapter 11. For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. We know those words. Mm -hmm. For whatever you eat and drink, well, sorry, and from whenever you eat and drink, uh, eat this bread and drink from this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. So then, verse 27, whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner, he is guilty of sinning against the body and the blood of the Lord. Everyone ought to examine themselves before they eat of the bread and drink from the cup. For those who eat and drink without discerning the body of Christ, eat and drink judgment on themselves. That is why many among you are weak and ill, and a number of you have fallen asleep. Die. But if we were more discerning with regard to ourselves, we would not come under such judgment. Nevertheless, when we are judging in this way by the Lord, we are being disciplined so that we will not be finally condemned in the world. So we're going to come around to the table now. If you put that music on quiet, it's quiet.